So in this recording, I'm going to show how we make this loop-the-loop -loop obstacle for the mini golf course. You can see a real-world example of it here. And you can see an example that I've already built out in Onshape right here. So I have a new uh, part studio that I just created that's going to allow me to make the loop-the-loop. -loop. Uh, let me go ahead and make a new part studio there for that. So in order to do this, this is very similar to the, to the, uh, the curvy tube example. And in this case, I need to orient that cylinder sideways. So what I'm going to do for my first sketch is I'm going to sketch on the right plane. I'm going to go around to my right view. I'm going to make a circle, which is going to define the diameter of the loop-the-loop. -loop. So in other words, how tall that loop-the-loop -loop is. Uh, let's say that we want this to be pretty big. I'm going to make this uh, 28 inches in diameter. So when I type that in, I'll have to zoom back out some for it to update. That looks good. The second thing I need to do, similar to the curvy tube, is I need to extrude to get a cylinder. And this is going to define kind of how tightly packed side to side that loop-the-loop -loop is. So if I want that to be a really tight, uh, twisty curve, I could make that, uh, that extrusion not super wide. If I wanted it to be a much more sort of shallow, like rounded thing, I could make that bigger. Uh, let's try making this 18 inches and call it good from there. Same thing as well here. I'm going to make a helix again to make that curving path that goes around it. I'm going to choose this outside face. And I want just one revolution of this helix because if you think about it, I need the path to start at the bottom, loop around to the top, and come back around to the bottom. So I just need one revolution here. And then the last thing that I might want to change in my helix is I might want to change the degree of uh, rotation for the start because I, if I'm looking at it from the front, I'd kind of like this starting point to be at the front. So let's try 90 degrees. Does that get the starting point where I want it? No, not quite. Let's try 270 degrees. Does that get the starting point where I want it? Uh, I believe that it does, yeah. So I'm going to click the green check. Again, I can turn that part visibility off because all I want is the helix. And now I'm left with that twisting path. Now I'm going to do this the same sort of way that I did for the curve A tube, except this time, I'm going to make a different kind of shape, and you'll see what that looks like as I sweep that shape across. So I'm going to make another sketch. I'm going to choose Mate Connector instead of Sketch Plane, and I want to choose the Mate Connector here. Again, this gives me that Sketch Plane that is, that is sort of like in line with the, the line itself. I'm going to make my sketch, and then I'm going to reorient that Mate Connector to flip it up so that it's ready to sweep. So in order to make this, uh, this sort of path, what you can see is that it's sort of a flat rectangular shape that's been swept around here. And it also has these side pieces. So let's do all of those at once. I'm going to come over here to my rectangle tool. And this time I'm going to choose my center point rectangle. And the reason I'm doing that is because I really want that centered right on the, uh, I want it centered right on the end of that line. So I'm going to click and drag out. Now I can set some dimensions for that. So maybe the path Maybe the path for this is 12 inches wide for the golf ball to travel along there. So I'm going to type in 12 inches here. And maybe that is 3 inches thick, let's say. Now it does have some edges, like some borders around there as well. So let's, let's, uh, let's pop those in there as well. Let's go ahead and add uh, some lines up here, which are going to define those borders. I'm not being too careful about those dimensions right now. I just want to get those edges sort of in there. When you put yours in, I'm sure you're going to do much better with putting in your dimensions very carefully. So the last thing I need to do is I need to sort of reorient this sketch so that it's rotated the right way. Double click on my mate connector. I know I need to rotate it 90 degrees, but I'm not sure which way. Looks like Z is not correct. How about X or Y rather? Nope. How about X? That looks pretty good, except I actually need to rotate it 270 degrees, it looks like. There we go. So now when I look at that, I can see that that's going to sweep around that helix. So that looks great. I can click the check. Now the exact same kind of thing. I'm going to go to my sweep tool. I need to choose all three of these profiles. And I need to click on my sweep path and choose that helix. And now it should sweep that all the way around. So you can kind of see there's the, uh, there's the main coil of my loop loop. So I can click the green check there. And that all looks good. Now, is there any problem that you see with this loop loop? What are you noticing? You wouldn't be able to get the ball. Yeah, so either you have to drop this down below the surface or you have to make some kind of ramp or thing that's going to change that. 
maybe adding, uh, maybe making this three inches thick wasn't quite the right thing to do. The nice thing is if I go back and I change this sketch and I make this 0 0.5 inches thick instead of three inches thick, it will automatically update that. And in fact, it will automatically update the sweep as well. So now I only have a half inch gap there. Maybe I could take this and add a little ramp that goes before it. Maybe I could, uh, let's see, will it allow me to fill it this? Yeah, it looks like it will probably allow me to fill it this. So let's try that. So I can kind of make a little entry ramp there. Maybe that's 0 0.5. And so it's a nice little lip that goes along there. Uh, I could even change the distance and angle there. Maybe I want this to be a very shallow ramp and I want it to span like four inches. So it's like a very shallow kind of entry point. Oh, that didn't, that didn't compute. I think I took it too far. Let's try two inches. That's too far. One inch. Oh, that's pretty close. So I can kind of guess and check my way into a pretty, into a pretty smooth uh, surface there. Do the same thing on the other side. I'd get a pretty nice like entryway into this loop. All right. So uh, just like any other part, I could go in here and I could change the appearance for those things by clicking on the faces, adding an appearance. Maybe I want this to be orange, and now my loop loop is bright orange. 